Liberia. That's an image befitting of a pressure fighting prospect with a never quit attitude, and such is the case of Ruslan Provodnikov. He faces Mauricio Herrera in our main event. And there is Mauricio Herrera. We just saw his younger brother, Albert, in our co-feature. But Mauricio, the more accomplished of the brothers, 15 and one, seven knockouts, comes from Southern California, 5'7", checked in at 140. Let's look at our fighter fact sheet. He turned pro at a late age of 27, three years of pro now. His lone loss. Well, a questionable eight-round decision against Mighty Mike Anchando, the former WBO junior lightweight world titleist. Many ringside thought Herrera clearly swept the last half of that fight and should have won the fight. And he was working as a plumber while he was going through the majority of his amateur career before turning pro at age 27. And there is Ruslan. Ruslan Provodnikov. 5'6", 140, 26 years old, now 17 and 0. Comes from a small town in Siberia, fought three times in Russia before coming to the U.S. Had a good amateur background, 150 fights before turning pro. Likes to train in Russia, in Siberia. Then he comes to the West Coast where his manager is, Vadim, and he finishes up at the wild card gym. He's had a couple of wins on ESPN against two named fighters. Last February, had a TKO win over former titleist Javier Guadague on Friday Night Fights. Then we saw him against the drunken master, Emmanuel Augustus, in May of last year, a ninth round TKO. We asked him how much growing up in Siberia has affected him. I just want to say that uh, definitely, you know, the, the perceptions that people have of, of Siberia are, are very true, you know, and, and I had a really, really tough time growing up, and I really feel that a lot of my character is, has, was built in my growing up in those tough times and, and you know, in the, in, the, in the seasons and the, the cold times and all of that. And I feel that uh, when I come into the ring, I, all of that comes out, kind of, you know. All, all, that's been, all that has been building up in me while I was growing up. And when I get in the ring, it's just, it's just a relief for me and I, I just let it all out. And that's why I think that some of my fights are, are very interesting to watch. That bruise under his eye was from recent sparring. It's no issue. It was not a cut. Teddy has the fight plan. Pop, pop. What's that? Some champagne corks still popping from last week's New Year celebration? No, that's over with. Maybe some rib smashing from Provotnikov's body punching. His New Year's resolution? Stay dedicated to that body attack. His opponent, Herrera, his resolution? Don't get your ribs broken. Herrera, I'm going to be Provodnikov. He's not strong enough to stay with Provodnikov. He's got to box a little bit, get in and out a little bit, use his legs a little bit. But when he goes defensive from that pressure from Provodnikov, drops his left hand, he tucks his chin in, so he's okay there. But he leans over on the right side, leaves his body. Bang! Provodnikov does that. Well, the crystal ball falls down. Happy New Year. Well, no, we got that already. But the legs collapse. Big win for Provodnikov. Well, how's it going to be a good year for Herrera? Well, he's got to stay out of the kitchen, stay out of the places where it's hot, inside with the stronger Provodnikov. Look how strong this guy is. Boy, you've been bulking up a little bit? Yeah, during the offseason. Okay, now, Herrera, who I'm going to be, he's got to step out a little bit, take what he gives him, and every once in a while, Provodnikov covers up, and he leans forward. When he does that, bang, look for the uppercut. Well, if Herrera can do that, well, champagne for everybody. It's going to be a great year. So we are set for Provodnikov and Herrera. And these will be the men working the corners tonight. Silva Valdivia and Herrera Sr., who is Mauricio's father. Same group that worked the corner of their brother Albert. So they had 10 minutes to turn things around and get ready for Mauricio. They are scheduled for 12, and Russell Mora is the referee. Okay, gentlemen, trunks here are good. Trunks here are good. Anything below that is a foul. We went over the rules in the dressing room, so you know I expect a clean fight. I want to remind you, protect yourself at all times. Obey my commands at all times. God bless you. Touch up. 
Ruslan Provodnikov, when we asked him yesterday, what have you been working on? What are you trying to improve on? He says, you're not going to see any changes with me or my style. I know the fans enjoy it. I enjoy it. The same aggressive forward fighting Provodnikov hey, you've always seen. Thank you, Ruslan. We look forward to it. Here it is, round number one against Herrera. Well, as I said in the opening, you already have proof that Provodnikov is no, not hard to no. find. No, 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 no. Coming in here with a black eye, <laughs> you can hit him. He got touched in the wild card, Jim. He says he was sparring against some bigger opponents. And it caused the bruise that you see under the right eye. Herrera's only loss was a split decision to a former world champion. So easily, Herrera could be coming into this fight 16-0. Told you problem that was with, a questionable decision. Problem with Herrera, no power. So he's going to be involved in a lot of close fights because he doesn't have that hammer to separate himself a little bit. Provodnikov has that hammer. Good for Herrera to score on the outside, quick combinations like that, and then step out, change distance. Step out, step to the side a little bit. And inside, if he has to, look for him to grab. Not be too proud, but grab a little bit, smother Herrera, or smother Provodnikov a little bit, so Provodnikov doesn't have room to attack that body. There he is grabbing a bit once Provodnikov closed that range after he was staying on the outside. There's a warning from Mora to Provodnikov. Provodnikov will cover up, and when he covers up, that's a chance to put punches together for Herrera. Very important for Provodnikov. You know, he's the guy that's going to be coming forward, a little bit of a plotter, slow on his feet. A lot of people are going to say, well, all you need is the power shots, the body shots to break down Herrera. No, not exactly. Provodnikov needs to use that jab to stabilize Herrera on the outside a little, Joe, to keep Herrera from doing that, using his jab and pot shotting. I think the jab of Provodnikov is going to be important. And if you don't see the jab, well, there's going to be problems, perhaps, for Provodnikov tonight. That was a right hand. It's close to coming in on that break that time from Provodnikov. Herrera utilizing the jab now, staying on the outside. You see, if I was thinking about strategy in the corner of Provodnikov, Again, we know that you want to put the pressure on. That's your style. We know you want to go to the body. But again, that jab to stop some of those punches coming from Herrera. Some redness in the right corner of the eye of Provodnikov. You can see it developing there. Watch Herrera here landing that left hand. You see the impact. You also see the great sophistication of the Super slow mo right there. I mean, what a great, vivid shot you get right there of the impact of the punch. 700 frames worth of super mo right there as you saw the impact of that left hand from Mauricio Herrera. And there is a red mark, looks like an abrasion in the corner of the right eye of the undefeated Provodnikov. Round number two scheduled for 12. So far, so good for Herrera. Grabs on the inside, as we talked about, which he should do. They let go every once in a while, Joe, on the inside. A little sneaky in there, in a smart way. In a good way for a fighter. He'll grab, then he'll let go and punch, then grab again. But he doesn't stay there too long to let the stronger man be strong. Now, use the descriptive there, smart. That's exactly what he has to be tonight, isn't it? First and foremost for Herrera. And one other thing, consistent. You know, Provodnikov can afford to make mistakes. You know, Herrera can't make mistakes because he's in there with a guy who has the eraser. Just saw the jab numbers, and Teddy, you made the point that it's actually Provodnikov, you think, who needs to utilize his jab. He fell short of Herrera's numbers in that first round. I really do think it's the jab, and that's what's missing right now. Again, it's so easy to get caught up in Provodnikov's style and his power. You know, it's intriguing. You want to see it, and it's TV-friendly. 
want to come forward, you want to bang that body, crack the ribs, break down the man, sap his strength, take away his will. But Herrera has something to say about that. And if he doesn't cooperate in the physical dimensions, Provodnikov needs him to cooperate. He stays on the outside, he boxes. Well, Provodnikov's going to need that jab to control things a little. Herrera gave him a little bit of movement to get away from that attack moments ago and then wrapped up on the inside. A little cut under the right eye, a little abrasion under the right eye now of Herrera. Just and down near the cheek area. And also a little abrasion and swelling under the left eye of Herrera. Again, Provodnikov's hands not as fast and he doesn't move them as often as Herrera. But they do damage, they're heavy. And you can see that damage in the face of Herrera early on. And opposite him, you see that intensity in the face of Provodnikov. Provodnikov's the kind of guy that, you know, he'll get out punched, he'll get out worked, but he'll start to bust you up a little bit. His punches are telling. Tried to place that right hand over the top. Kind of like reminds me a little bit of the great, great fight years ago with Meldrick Taylor and Cesar Chavez. You know, Taylor threw more punches, but Chavez was busting them up. Coming to the end of round two. More to come. Stay with us. Mauricio Herrera, the 30-year-old, taking on quite a challenge here tonight against the unbeaten Russian Ruslan Provodnikov. Round three. You know, Joe, I'd like to take a moment to one of our favorite fighters, but one of our favorite people in the whole world, lost his mom the other night. I'd like to send all our condolences to Mickey Ward and his family. Mickey's mom passing away just the other night. Our condolences to the Ward family, all their friends back in New England. Mickey was just going to actually make is going to be named the Farley Award winner by the Boxing Writers of America and that award is for honesty and integrity in the sport of boxing they could not have picked a better recipient than Mickey Ward of course Mickey Ward nobody has fought more on Friday Night Fights over the years than Mickey Ward did Oh, when you thought about Friday Night Fights at ESPN, you thought about Mickey Ward, and you thought about good fights. And right now getting a lot of attention with the movie. Well-regarded, highly acclaimed movie, The Fighter, is out in theaters right now. Mickey's life story, the story of his brother, Dickie Eckert. And very apropos movie, and what I mean by that, Joe, is what was Mickey? If you said he was one thing, what was he? Tough. was an honest, tough, oh, yeah. but an honest yeah. fighter. Well, it's an honest movie. Yeah, he, he sure was. He's honest in every way. It's a uh, good time of the year for boxing movies and TVs. The series Lights Out is going to be coming out this week. I think that's going to do terrific. My friend Holt McCallany is the star of that, and that is coming out on the 11th of January. It will be a weekly series on FX, and I think they've done a tremendous job with it. I think it's going to be a big hit. And, of course, our series off to a good start here tonight. Friday Night Fights, our season debut. And right now, off to a good start again. However, understand what he's got to do. Grab on the inside. Not allow the hands to move on the inside of the stronger Provodnikov. And do some scoring on the outside. The problem, and we touched on it early for Herrera, no pop in those punches. And now his left eye is starting to really swell and close. And again, I harken back to Meldrick Taylor and Cesar Chavez. Remember that great fight? Sure, show? absolutely. I mean, Taylor threw all the punches, the fancy punches, but he was getting busted up. Bad and swelling now on Yeah, Provodnikov busting him up a little bit. ABC. How about that shot of the eye? Looks like an eggplant has been implanted in the left eye of Mauricio Herrera. There it is right there. And that's where you need a good cut man to use the end swell and get that swelling down before it gets out of control. 
And right there, that left hook did Go. some of the damage. We will see how that compromises Herrera here in round number four. You know, to be a good cut man, you have to be like a gardener. And what in, I what, mean, in what way? I got to hear this. You got to get the weeds out before they choke the plants. That's, before <laughs> it's too late. Before yep. they overrun the whole garden. Well, that left side's got wait. a lot of weeds. Yeah, and they're letting the weeds grow a little too long over there. You got to get on that swelling very early, not late in the game. Oh, it's a good combination that time by Herrera. Turning into a one-eyed wonder here. If Herrera had a Christmas wish, and now it would be a New Year's wish, it wouldn't be to get his two front teeth. It would be to have a little power, a little pop, to keep Provodnikov off him. That's the one thing he doesn't have. He's got plenty of heart, plenty of grit, he's got good hand speed, but he doesn't have that pop to slow Provodnikov down. I still think Provodnikov needs to use that jab more. Again, it's easy to just get caught up with your power, with the big, giant punches, but that jab's so important, not just the fast guys, like the world champion Devin Alexander, who we're gonna have with us in a little while. It's not only important for guys like that, it's important for strong guys like Provodnikov. Use that jab, stabilize the faster guys. I think Herrera is getting a break here. Provodnikov, yeah, he's throwing those power shots, but he's not using those jabs to really give Herrera problems. Herrera needs to stay on the outside and stop falling in to the stronger Provodnikov. You know, we're talking about the quick hands of Herrera. Somebody needs to whisper in Herrera's ear a little bit. Let's see the quick feet. That's what Herrera needs, Joe, right now. Feet. <laughs> Who was that great comedian said, feet don't fail me now. Yeah, he needs those feet to serve him well. Get out of the way, show a little defense, protect that left eye. <laughs> Make something happen here against Provodnikov. End of four. Joe and Teddy ringside. Glad to be joined by the WBC super lightweight champion, Devin Alexander. Hey, you got some big plans coming Thanks up for me. Thanks at for the having end me, of Dad. January. Your, uh, your big showdown with Tim Bradley. How is camp going so far? Camp's going good. Camp is always good for me. What you I love what on? I do. What's uh, the game plan here? Give us a hint. I can't. Come on, I you can't. gotta tell you know, us. What you know, Bradley might be watching. So I, can't, <laughs> I, I, can't, I can't. I guarantee. Him, I, can't, yeah. I guarantee he's watching. But give us a scouting report as, well, you know, as to what you see when you stand opposite him. Well, Bradley, you know he's gonna come prepared to go 12 rounds straight. So you gotta come in prepared to go 12 hard. So that's that's what I think I have to worry about. You know, I'm gonna come prepared. So he's gonna come prepared. So um, that's the only thing I see that. I have to worry about. That's oh, a strong showdown, January 29th. Here's the guy that's always got the scouting report. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna make sure. Thanks, I, Tim. Well, I think you're gonna make sure also, you know, Bradley, you know he's gonna try to attack this place right definitely, here. Definitely. Downstairs, so I think, I was just talking about fast feet. Mm -hmm. I got a funny feeling we're gonna see some footwork with you. Oh, definitely, definitely. I, I, why would I sit there? Round number five of our main event, Herrera against Provodnikov. Herrera dealing with that badly swollen left eye. Provodnikov always coming forward with that attacking style. Glad to be joined by Devin Alexander. 21-0, showdown against the 26-0 Tim Bradley coming up at the end of January. 140-pound yeah, fight right here. What do you see in Provodnikov? He's strong, very strong. I mean, I didn't even see the other guy. I get swollen like that. It just... You know, it's, you know, I was saying, Alexander, the same thing, uh, Devin. I was saying earlier that it reminds me a little bit. Of course, they're not at those stages. They're not at those heights yet. But remember the fight years ago, Meldrick Taylor and Cesar Chavez? Definitely. You know, definitely. Taylor's throwing all those punches. It didn't look like Chavez was doing much. But then you looked at the face of Taylor, and wow. He got power. He had some power, you know. 
Devin. This is a good fight, though. Best of luck at the end of January. Appreciate Anything it. Anything you want to say to your fans out there? Well, you know that the odds are three to one in Bradley's favor, so I'm glad about that. So you like being the dog? Yeah, yeah, I, I don't mind. I don't mind. What so are you telling? Sure. You, what are you telling your fans that they could make a good investment and make a little <laughs> extra <laughs> money hey, for 2011? I'm telling you, go come. I'm already at the place of booking, so yeah. all they got to do is come here and, and put their money on me. Very appropriate with your training camp here in Vegas. Best of luck, Devin. Thank you. We will be uh, covering your fight and seeing you down the road. January 29th. Uh, uh, after we'll have the all fight, the, I want that to have you on again. We'll be glad to have you Definitely. on. We'll Definitely. have all the pre-fight coverage on Friday Night Fights, and then we will uh, hope to visit with you after your showdown. Devin, your two Tim things your, your two things that make you an important commodity. God. And we'd love to have you on. Yeah, Number one, up. you're a world champion. Right. You're a good fighter. Punches up. But you're a gentleman. And we love to have fighters that are good and that are gentlemen. So you're welcome anytime. Thank you, Ted. Thank you. Be well, Devin. Devin Alexander, WBC 140-pound champion, joining us here at ringside. Final minute now of round five. There's that hard jab of Provodnikov again. Believe it or not, Joe, at this point, Provodnikov looks like he can really take control of this fight. If I'm in the corner... I know we're going to be going to the body. We understand the power. We understand all that. That's his identity. You know, that's his bread and butter. But I'd be saying concentrate on that power jab. Right down the middle. Bust him up with that there kind of punch. Right that there. jab. Bust Good him solid up. solid jab. And then both men open up with right hands that time. Herrera now dips forward. Now there's an opportunity for Provodnikov to do something that you don't think about with Provodnikov. On the inside, take a little step back and let Herrera fall in a little bit. See how Herrera falls in right there? Take a little step back if you're Provodnikov, give a little ground, and let him walk into an uppercut. I don't think we've ever seen him take a step back. No, that would be something new. Good action here to close out the fifth round, a right hand by Herrera. Stay with us, more to come. I'm gonna take God. Expo, oh, truck one of the is, new toys yeah. on Friday Night Fight oh, Expo and our great truck getting it for us. We're talking about the jab and how important, how destructive it can be for Provodnikov. There is a great illustration of that. Stay there. Now you see the ringside physician taking a look at that left eye. Okay. Okay. Here's what I like about the physicians here in Nevada. Pops. We've got Dr. Berliner, Capata, Game, and Maserano here ringside with us tonight. They are local ringside, they are physicians, but ringside physicians. They know what they're looking for when it comes to can a fighter continue or not. You know, when I see an eye closing like that, it reminds me of the old days, way old days of gladiators, world champions like Carmen Basilio, Sugar Ray Robinson. I'll never forget that fight with Carmen Basilio in the second fight in the rematch with Robinson. He had his eye completely closed. Afterwards, he lost his decision. The writer said to him, ready to give him an excuse. Do you think if your eye wasn't closed, you would have had a better shot? He said, no, not at all. My other eye was fine. <laughs> you don't get too many people like that anymore. Look at the power punches in round number five. Herrera landing 25. Provodnikov, 23. Well, we said it all night long. Of, of the Herrera brothers, you knew who the more accomplished was, the more skilled was. Mauricio putting forth a fine effort tonight, especially considering that left eye swollen shut the way it is. Well, he needs to be the better one, the more skilled one. He's in there with a much tougher situation, much tougher opponent. Right hand to the body from Provodnikov. See, right now, Provodnikov not showing just his power. He's showing a little bit of that amateur experience where he's had many, many amateur fights. He's looking to time Herrera a little bit. Watch. See, he's waiting for Herrera to make the move. He's not just walking in. He's waiting. He knows Herrera's got to come to him a little bit now. He's behind. And he knows his vision's not too good. So he's going to let Herrera come to him and look to time him. 150 amateur fights him before turning pro and coming here to the U.S. Herrera now, a little confidence coming forward. Well, I'd say it again, Joe. The reason why Herrera is getting these little spots is two reasons. One is his heart. He's a gritty guy. Sure is. But the other reason is no jab from Provodnikov, so he's allowing Herrera to live on the outside. That jab wouldn't let him exist on the outside. Yes, 
Now with Flurry, most of that blocked. And a little mistake by Provodnikov there. He allowed Herrera to fall in and smother him. See, again, Provodnikov allowing himself to be smothered. Needs to rotate those shoulders, even take a little step back. Create a space. little room, yeah. a little space. Halfway point of a good-looking main event. End of six. The Tostitos BCS National Championship, ESPN Monday night. What a matchup. Number one Auburn, number two Oregon. The two undefeateds will collide. Game is available also on ESPN Radio, ESPN 3D, on your phone, every which way you want it. Don't miss it. Oregon, Auburn for all the marbles. Round number seven. That swollen left eye of Herrera, but still fighting smart, finding confidence against the unbeaten prospect, Ruslan Provodnikov. Good looking fight here. Now, if one fighter knows what to do to take someone else's strength away, the other fighter must know what to do to counter that not to allow him to take his strength away. What I'm talking about is Herrera knows to take away the inside punching, fall in, do that. Smother Provodnikov. Provodnikov needs to understand what to do not to allow that situation. Take a little step back and create room. Not get smothered. Which, which could create a big opportunity. He's been targeting a few right hands here early on has Provodnikov looking to move more damage to that left eye. And part of being able to do what I'm calling on Provodnikov to do is just awareness. Awareness that your opponent is not going to engage you in the inside, in the close quarters, in the trenches. That he is going to fall in. He is going to look to smother you. Awareness of that. And then obviously execution of what needs to be done. No jab from Provodnikov, and what do you get? Four or five punch combinations on the outside by Herrera. See, Provodnikov, 39% of his power punches have been going to Herrera's body. Provodnikov may win this fight tonight, but I think they need to learn something from it. As he steps up the boxing ladder, and he stepped up a little bit here, give him credit. But as he continues, if he wins, to step up the boxing ladder, he needs to be able to add something to give a little bit more dimension to the things that he does other than just the big power shots and the body shots. To add that jab in there a little bit. Put that in his arsenal. Look at that left eye. As it continues to swell. It happened so fast when it started to swell, and you said, boy, they got behind it, and once that happens, and with that attack of Provodnikov, there's no retreat to that swelling. Started up in the third round. So you see those spots where Provodnikov depends on the power so much, he'll jump in with those big hooks. Those are spots where he'll pay a price somewhere down the road where a fighter will counter him, time him coming in. ABC. Back here on Friday Night Fights, Brian Kenny here. We're going to send it out to Las Vegas, but here's what the fans are saying on Twitter. Kyle Miller saying Provodnikov dropping left hand. He'll be caught by a better fighter. We'll have Teddy weigh in on that. And Isai Molina saying the jab by Herrera could mean a long night for Ruslan. Generally, fans out there, guys, really loving this fight so far. Joe, Teddy? Yeah, I think there's a lot to like with the spirited effort from Herrera and him trying to fight as smart as he can. So we've had a couple fans tonight that have tweeted and sent in comments to BK talking about the defensive flaws in the two favorites and mentioning that when it comes to Provodnikov here. Well, again, we were just talking about that the last round that Provodnikov, I have my head on the scorecards. He's still got a way to go to win this fight, but if he does win the fight as the favorite and as people would expect him to win coming into this fight, He's still going to have to improve. This is going to have to be a lesson. They can't just say, well, we got another W in the column and look at the things they did well. They got to look at the things that they didn't do well. Didn't use the jab enough. A little too easy to find in some spots as the audience tweeted into Brian Kenny. 
and picked up on. Those are things that are going to be needed to be corrected for the journey to a world title. Streak of blood now coming from the nose of Herrera. There's another thudding right hand. Also, another thing we talked about that Herrera or Provodnikov has to correct is if you're going to live by the sword, well, you're going to have to make sure that that sword is always available to be swung. And when you get inside, it's not always available to be swung. He's being smothered a lot. Sometimes he's allowing himself to put his hands behind Herrera, like that right there. You got to keep that sword available. That's another thing that Provodnikov is going to have to work on in the gym because those opportunities are going to have to be capitalized on, again, with the better and better fighters. You fight a guy like Devin Alexander, you better use that jab to slow him down a little bit. A guy like Tim Bradley, you better jab. You better be more than just a strong guy. Swelling under the right eye of Provodnikov. Tries to close that gap now. Yeah, but as he closed it, he reached in a little bit. That's another bad habit we talked about earlier, where while you're reaching in, somebody can counter you. We said it earlier, you know what kind of fight you're getting when you get Ruslan Provodnikov. Next week, Peter Manfredo Jr., Daniel Edward. You think about those two names, you pretty much know what kind of fight you're getting. Yeah, they come to fight. They do. I mean, they engage each other. Uh, Manfredo, of course, everybody knows who he was, he, or who he is. Fought on the Contender Series. I think he's maybe, he's going to have to be the biggest, stronger guy in that fight for Daniel Edward. But Edward, very game experienced fighter can box a little bit and he'll fight with you should be a good match you know i think it's interesting and very telling that you you just correct yourself you know who peter manfredo was i think the key for both guys next week manfredo and edward are are they the guys they were or the guys they currently are yeah that's a big part of it is what is left right of the two of men also that's what makes it an interesting match because what we just said is it's a crossroads fight for both participants and that's going to be interesting. That's next week down in Key West. Daniel Edward, of course, South Florida based, the Haitian sensation, Manfredo, the pride of Providence coming down to the Keys. Round number nine here between Vodnikov and Herrera. That was an example right there where Provodnikov on the inside had his arms around the shoulders of Herrera, not in the position they need to be to do work, excavating work, digging, groundbreaking work, body work. One of the best combinations when I was looking at film of Provodnikov to break this fight down to me was his left hook to the body, the right hand to the head. I haven't seen that tonight. I'm surprised. And once again, no jab from Provodnikov, allowing a very gritty Herrera to come in and go out. There's the jab. There it was. And you know, that jab, it's frustrating, I think, if you're in the corner of Provodnikov, because although you enjoy it and you like it and you're glad you see it, you wonder, why don't I see it more often? Because it's so effective and accurate when he does throw it. So, yeah, it's great to see it, but it's also got to make you a little bit angry that you just don't see it consistently enough. Came up out of that crouch trying to land the left hand that time, just off the mark. And you 
see the punch stat numbers, the jabs this round. Landing five for Vodnikov. And you know, I'm criticizing Provodnikov a little bit for the jab. Well, you have to shout a little bit of criticism to Herrera. He needs that jab. Three rounds to go. Are you in your... That left eye, the bad swelling. So Mauricio Herrera, ringside physician, came in after the ninth round. Referee Russell Mora came in. He said, oh, it's nothing. Oh, it's something. And Mora said, you've got to show me that you can see and defend yourself and stay in the fight or else we have to stop it. Well, he's been in the fight every step of the way, Teddy. But they are always concerned about the fighter's safety. Forewarned and forprepared. What I mean by that is if you know someone's going to do something, you can be prepared to take advantage of that knowledge. And you know Herrera is going to score on the outside, which he's trying to do right now because there's no jab stabilizing him from Provodnikov. But you know that he's going to fall in in spots and try to smother you. Be right there. He fell in. Be, and he fell in again. Be prepared if you're Provodnikov to time him, to punch with him as he falls in, and to nail him as he falls in. Coming up after this fight, Brian Kenny is going to have one-on-one -on -one interview with Bernard Hopkins. Of course, B-Hop getting ready to celebrate yet another birthday, but he is still right there. And at the top of the light heavyweight division, Jean Pascal, of course, the Ring Magazine champ. And Hopkins, number one. We've seen some left hooks, some right hands, some body work. Not enough body work, I don't think, from Provodnikov, but we've seen some of that. Maybe the punch we need to see besides the jab now is the uppercut. Right there where Herrera falls in, I think he's going to be doing more and more of that down the stretch now as he tires a little bit and tries to survive a little bit by falling in. That uppercut for Provodnikov can be a very effective punch. Again, you see Herrera starting to tire. The pressure all night long of Provodnikov always coming forward, always pushing him. It's starting to show physically to me on Herrera. Starting to falter a little bit, slow down a little bit, fall in a little bit more. All that pressure from Provodnikov and having a deal since the third round onward with that badly swollen left eye that just took another right hand. It's game time. Just, he's got just a slip That's how he earns his paycheck. How's that for a day of work? Mauricio Herrera heading into the 11th round against the undefeated pressure fighting Ruslan Provodnikov. You know, coming into this fight, Herrera knew that he had to act like a boxer understand his identity but he's been behaving like a fighter has he ever all night long just a moment ago we eavesdropped dropped in the corner and the doctor came in there looked into his eyes said can you see herrera gave me affirmative said what you would expect a fighter to say as he's trying to look through that little slit of an eye he said yes i can see doctor says well if you have trouble let me know <laughs> sure I'll get right back to you doc Ma matter of fact maybe i'll tweet you right. he'll text him that i got issues and uh, you need to stop the fight you just let him know you know let me tell you something the way herrera Wait. has fought tonight how game he's been he's not letting anybody know how much pain he's in or the situation that he's dealing with he's gonna fight and fight some more meanwhile provodnikov doing much of what he's done all night long taking another right hand swipe at that left eye, overhand that time. <laughs> That's where I think that Provodnikov can really 
scored some big shots. Right now, not just on the inside, but I think on the outside as Herrera tries to come in. Because that pressure we talked about in the last round, Joe, that pressure, you know, has its effects. Pressing a guy all night, and you see Herrera fade just a little bit physically. And as he falls in on the outside, that was a good example there, but Provodnikov did not pull the trigger. Look at this combination from Herrera. You know, this is one of those moments, and I, I think Herrera's well behind on the scorecards, but when I watch professional fighters do what they do into the 11th round being tested, and they keep putting forth an effort like this while dealing with an eye that is shut, you really ask yourself, could you do this? Could you even put forth one ounce of this kind of effort and will and determination? It's amazing what you see. What you see... It's the insides of a fighter. You see the character of a fighter. It's the best. And that's something that's been developed over many years. When you watch this sport at its best, it exposes a man. And that can be in a very good way. Because you're seeing the best of Herrera and how game he is. Well, what's great about the sport is a man can get in that ring, stand there, set his feet and say, you're not better than me. Just because you come from a place that maybe gave you resources I didn't have, or you were born into something I wasn't born into, you're not better than me. I'm not allowing you to be better than me. I'm making a statement. I have the choice to make that statement. Herrera trying to make that statement. And a trade at the end of 11. One round to go. We will listen in the sights and sounds of each corner as the doctor looks at Herrera's eye yet again. Last round, Last round here, dude. Last round. Okay. Okay. Last round, okay. Junior. Last round, Junior. Last round, Junior. Last round, Be smart, Понимаешь, что надо в этом? Кто выберет? Подожди, кто чемпион, бро. Ты ведь сделаешь. Давай. Кто выберет? Кто выберет? Сейчас как встаешь, иди прямо на него. Первый ты начал. Кто выберет? Twelfth and final round. Provodnikov looking to move his mark to 18 and 0. Herrera giving it one last shot with a left eye that is swollen shut. Good downward right hand that time from Provodnikov that hit the mark. You know, I'm still going to say, Joe, I know everybody wants to see. Provodnikov on the inside, I think he can do damage on the outside. As Herrera falls in, as he did a moment ago, drops that shoulder and tries to fall in for defense, for cover. I think Provodnikov, with that 150 bouts of average experience, he can time him coming in. Quick break that time by Russell Moore as Herrera was off balance going to the right side. There was another opportunity. Herrera falls in there. That's where I would like to see Provodnikov look to pull the trigger on a punch. He was a little late that time. And the uppercut, as I said a couple rounds ago, can be there for Provodnikov, even in this last round, as Herrera does that. Drops in a little bit. See the swelling actually increasing right now around the right eye of Provodnikov as Herrera was able to land a left hand. The left eye's worsening on Herrera. I didn't think it could. There was a right hand, a combination, a left right from Herrera. Still giving here. And still feeling the pressure, not just to survive, but to try to win, to take chances, to fall in a little bit. And when he does do that, that's the opportunity, I think, that Provodnikov has not taken advantage of to time him on the way in. Right there, Provodnikov tried to time Herrera with the right hand. 
Jones looking for that right hand. Over the top now. Provodnikov is trying to time Herrera now, and I think he will right down to the end here. Time him on the way in with that right hand or the left hook. Brought him with a clubbing right hand that time. More blood streams from the nose of Herrera, and he's just working that belt line and then tying up and still throwing short right hands and working on the inside. You gotta wonder about the scoring in this fight. More punches thrown by Herrera, but the telling punches, the damaging punches, they were thrown by Provodnikov for the most part. They bring it home, last five seconds. Right hand from Herrera at the bell. That was a fighter's round right there. They deserve the applause. Good work from both men. Herrera was so game. Provodnikov consistent. Judges when we return. Look at the faces of the tough warriors, Herrera and Provodnikov, as they embrace there. That left eye of Herrera, swollen shut from the third round forward, yet he was there every step of the way, Teddy, as we look at the punches of the night brought to you by Just For Men Hair Color in our Exmo, our Super Mo. What an effort by Mauricio Herrera against the unbeaten Provodnikov. And there's that jab that you didn't see enough of from Provodnikov, but there's the jab in the right hand from Herrera, and then an extra left for good measure. Let's look at the CompuBox numbers, and you see that they both throw in the high 800s. Comparable numbers here, 300 landed for Herrera, 326 for Provodnikov. CompuBox stats have it as a very, very close fight. Teddy's scorecard, well, the eye of Herrera says otherwise. Provodnikov showed you confidence, showed you that he was in control, but still, tight enough on Teddy's scorecard with Herrera. With that bad eye, the referee and the doctor were talking about stopping the fight. Instead, he goes out and wins the last two rounds, 116 to 112. A tremendous effort by Mauricio Herrera. Did Provodnikov yeah, stay undefeated? No, Let's go up to the ring to Mike Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, having gone the distance, we'll go to your judges' scorecards. Judge Adelaide Bird scores about 115 to 113. While judges Dick Hauk and Dwayne Ford both score the fight the same at 116 to 112, all for the winner by unanimous decision. And now the new IBF North American Junior welterweight champion, Mauricio El Maestro Herrera. How about that? One eye, spirited effort throughout, and they give it to Herrera. Ruslan Provodnikov suffers the first loss of his career. A great way to open up the Friday Night Fight 2011 season. An upset here in Vegas with a tremendous effort from the California kid. Well, the judges were looking at who was throwing. Okay, now we got some guys. And in their mind, who was landing. And it didn't matter who had more impact and who did more damage. What mattered was who put more leather on the other guy. And they saw Herrera doing that. I saw Provodnikov just throwing the more effective, more damaging punch. Well, look at the damage of the left eye. Clearly effective and damage was done by Provodnikov, but you cannot deny, obviously, the effort, the work rate of Herrera. And judges will go either way sometimes on this, and tonight they go that way. Here's the reaction on the decision. Raises the arms, and keep in mind, Teddy, and we talked about this, the last four rounds of this fight, the ref and the doctor were coming over saying, hey, you have to show us that you can see, that you can defend yourself, that you can stay in the fight. He kept saying, I'm fine, I'm fine. But they were threatening a stoppage. They were looking at it, they were being responsible. They saw that eye, but in the end, the fighter had everything under control. He was able to see through that slit, and he was able to see the biggest win in his career now. 16, 112 twice, 115, 113. Mauricio Herrera pulls the upset. Good sign of things to come. Gonna be that kind of a year on 